in terms of opening up the meeting. Um, yeah, let's open up the meeting at, uh, I think, 207-ish um, on whatever the date is, May 13th, uh, 2021. Um, and then I think the first order of business is public comment. Do we have any members of the public? I'm driving back, so I can't see. No, you're good, Jim. OK. Um, and then remind me, you probably have the consent agenda or the agenda in front of you. We don't have anything on the consent agenda, right? We just have the. We have a couple of hires on the consent. Okay. Um, do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda. Uh, do you have a second? I second. Uh, any discussion? No, uh, Jill. Hi. Um, Amanda. Yes. Uh, Mia. Hi. Uh, Kristen. Hi. Uh, Jerry. Hi. Uh, I don't know if Andrew's on. He said it was going to be late. He's, uh, he's not here yet. All right. Uh, Emma. Hi. Um, Anakin? Aye. Did I miss anyone? Great. Nope, well uh, done. Uh, consent agenda passes. Um, if I recall, we have a brief discussion of prom. Is that next? Yeah. That's a fun topic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't count your chicken. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, okay, so for prom, we got the guidance for prom probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago that we could even have a prom. Um, and so MHS uh, prom committee, kind of senior committee, led by teachers and students, uh, were scrambling to find a venue for prom. The students are quite adamant they want it off campus. Uh, but that limits the number of venues that we can access with the number of kids who want to do prom, of course. So they did find um, the Capitol Plaza as being able to accommodate the number of kids who want to um, attend prom, which is awesome, for May 22nd. However, the Capitol Plaza is requiring that in order to have the prom there, that there has to be a police officer on premises. So the M Montpelier Police Department is requiring, before they ask any of their officers, a letter from the board stating that the board, is, or that the school district is the one who is asking the police for their presence there and with uh, stipulations around the dress of the officer. So I have written a very short and simple letter for the board to consider I'm going to put it in the chat right now. And I just found out about this very recently, which is why it wasn't in the board packet. Hold on one second. Let me make the restrictions open. Okay. So here is the letter for you all to consider. I can also share my screen if that's helpful. that addresses the police department's concern. Jill, you have a question? Yeah, I was I was wondering if you knew the reason why they wouldn't want it at the school and can can is there any authority to say cuz it just seems like that'd be really safe there's parking I, I don't students the students want it off campus is like a something extra special. I that's the only reason I could give you. I really have no other reason other than the students want it off campus. Okay. We at the gym, I mean, we can do it in the gym. There, we yeah. can't. Yeah, it just seems like, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed they get to have one at all, which is awesome. It just seems like that would be the path of least resistance and less money and safe. And I mean, who gets to like sign off? Does like the principal or somebody have to say, yes, we, it's either at the auditorium or it's not happening? Am I just a big meanie? 
Uh, it's it's either at the Capitol Plaza with a police officer on staff or it's at the gym. Right. Or at the gym. Um, I can tell you that this would be the first, if we're in the gym, this would be the first year anyway that there weren't, a, there wasn't a police officer on duty for prom. So that's standard anyway. Yeah, no. Harwood, okay. has, Harwood has two lined up, South Burlington has two. Renee did some research on it before she came to me with it. Okay, thank you. So I think what we need is basically approval to send a letter, correct? Yes, so so the board would either approve it so Jim can sign the letter and get it to the MPD so that they can book the plaza, the Capitol Plaza, or the board does not approve it and I can let the students know that they will be having their prom in the gym because we can't, because this wasn't approved. Amanda, you have your hand up? I do. So, I mean, it seems like we just went a whole year talking about safety and what it means for BIPOC students to have police officers in campus. And I, I don't know if there's any negotiation that can be done with Capitol Plaza or, uh, but it, it just, and because I didn't have a chance, like I don't have a chance to think about it and like really look at pros and cons. It, it, it seems like a rush thing. So I'm just throwing it up how like the feeling is right now. It's like, we just went through a whole process for six months around safety and what it means to have police officers and uniforms and all of that. If the choice is. The officer will not, will not be in uniform. Can I, Go ahead, can I, ask, I have a clarifying question. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I see that it says business casual, but I, I, I think that still means that it's this is an on-duty officer, which which means that they're, they're still carrying a weapon. The, I sorry. guess that's... It, it, sorry, I was yeah. nodding. I'm not speaking. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. The, the Montpelier Police Department has made it very clear that they, right. they can't have an on-duty police officer and not have a weapon. Right. So while it's not exactly um, uniform, that... The, the 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 person will be dressed if we go forward with this the same way the SRO was dressed whenever on campus um, in previous years is my understanding. The SRO is dressed in many different ways, but yeah, they, okay. they would be in the khakis and the MPD polo. Mostly, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it looks like Emma Emma put her hand up. Oh, sorry, Emma. Go ahead. Um, my gut is to be supportive of what the students and the faculty and the committee have planned. And if that's what that class wants to do for their prom and they understand that a police officer has to be present and that's still how they want to proceed, then my gut is to be supportive of that. I feel like this grade and last year's seniors, you know, they've missed out on a lot of their sort of benchmark moments of being in their final years of high school. So I'm sure that they're like a prom is like beyond, you know, the imagination of these kids almost at this point. So um, I'm inclined to be supportive of the event. I sort of agree with Amanda that like, maybe we could at least have one more phone call with the Capitol Plaza to see if we might be able to hire a security guard who wouldn't have to be armed. Um, I think there's a local security company that does that type of thing. Um, but I don't know if that's something that has already been explored and ruled out. The only th I have not been a part of these discussions, so I'm only relaying information that I have. The only information I have is that they first said that they wanted three police officers on duty <laughs> and Renee talked them down to one. Um, so my hunch, and this is just my hunch, I don't, I don't know because I was not part of the negotiations, is that they are pretty clear that it is an on-duty police officer. And then one other, just as a teacher who's fairly recent past has chaperone proms, it's one of my favorite duties. Is um, <laughs> you're weird then. <laughs> I just love, I love prom. It's so fun. Um, and Danville did like this crazy, I'll have to tell you about it sometime. 
But um, anyway, usually the either the security guards or police officers would be outside of the actual space where the dance is happening. So they're not like in the room with the kids. Um, is that something that we could explore? Renee and I were talking about just that this morning. And while, of course, we can't promise that, but that is the intent of the officers that they they would most likely be out on the parking. It's mainly for substance abuse, quite honestly, um, and to watch for substance abuse. So, um, so while, again, we can't promise that because if something happened inside, they would need to go inside. Um, and the Capitol Plaza would most likely want to be able to state where they are. Um, our intent would be to have them, kids aren't, kids aren't engaging in substance abuse in the actual prom area. We'll put it that way. That's not where, there's lots of adults in that area. Mia, did you have your hand up first or Jill? Uh, Emma asked my question. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Jill. I was just gonna say, I'd like to um, offer a motion that I, uh, that the board uh, direct uh, Director Murphy to sign this letter um, requesting um, the Montpelier Police Department to have the officer on site as required by the host site um, so that our students can have fun. As the parliamentarian, I'm sure that's not how Robert's rules, which I've now gotten, would have me say it, but I, I would like to make a motion that we support this request. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think you did a, a great job with the motion. Um, do, do we have a second? I second. Uh, I, think, I think Jerry got there first. Um, <laughs> any, any further discussion? Mia? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's anything we can do about it, but I wonder if there's any, any conversation that could be had with the student organizers and the, the committee about you know, I, I just don't want any student to feel that there's a barrier to being able to enjoy what Emma has just pointed out is like this really momentous occasion. And and I guess I do also hear you saying, Libby, that if it were 2019, and even if it was at the school, there would have been a police officer. But now we know more than, or if, or if we were in Harwood, or if we were in South Burlington, you know, but, but we just know so much more than we did about what this impact is on BIPOC kids. And I, 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 I don't, I mean, I, I'll, I'll vote to sign this, to send, tell Jim to sign this letter. That's okay. But I just also would like to have this be, you know, I don't, I don't know, go, not go back to the committee, but just like ask the committee to, to weigh that consideration if they haven't already. Thank you, um, Amanda. Yeah, I would like I would like to see um, an actual engagement with BIPOC students and a very clear um, um, path to say we made this decision. I I and for the prom committee to make that consideration, but also to inform students that that was a decision they made. I think it's important just um, just to yeah just for 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 students who don't feel safe around the presence to be able to make the decisions for themselves um, whether or not they're gonna go to prom because this happens you know it's, just, it's that simple so I I don't know how it works when you don't I I also just feel like decisions like these are really hard for me like in the in the in the 20 minute okay let's just move on it's, it's feeling so like um it, in that you know i i don't know if people are used to people voting no and then just having the majority vote so or abstaining from the vote i would like to do that because i don't feel like it goes with the principles of the work that we've done for the past seven months and i also hear what emma is saying about you know like this is what the students want but it is a committee and I wonder if there is representation from the students that do not feel safe with these things. And if there are conversations around um, collaboration and you know, like what is what is the, the decision? So that's that's where I'm at. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we definitely have had no votes and abstentions in the past. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? I guess Emma? I'd be interested in putting a line into the letter that's saying that the school board will allow this, but that um, we want the committee to, you know, reach out to BIPOC students and maybe consider <clears throat> any other possible um, alternatives, like hiring a private security guard that would be unarmed. This but, letter's for the MPD. It's not for the committee. Yeah, I, can ask the, I can ask the group to do that. Prom is in two weeks. So there's not a whole lot of time <laughs> to, but I can certainly ask the, the T, I can talk to Renee about that. Does that suffice, Emma, or? Yeah, I'm having a lot of feelings like Amanda, I mean, as the chair of the School Safety Police Relations Committee, uh, it's, I'm just really torn on this because I want to be super supportive of kids planning this great event that they're, they, you know, are probably super thrilled to be able to have. And then I also want to like be true to living our principles, uh, especially in the work that we've just done. So I'm a little torn and it's hard for me to, um, you know, I wish I had had some time to reach out to some people and ask how students are feeling or, you know, get some more stakeholder input here. Um, advocate? So, oh, uh, sorry. Did I skip no, over Jim, you, yeah, Jim, did, you want to go ahead? Okay. Yeah, well, I get ready to go and then, then yeah. hear from Jill. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a point of clarification. We, the, the, we can still do all of the other things uh, just because we are voting on this. We're just, we're just saying that we're delivering the letter or we're, we have, we're giving Jim the authority to, to, to sign this letter and that's to the police, right? And it, so if we can still do other things, talk to the, to the, to the committee and, and do other things. This letter is not actually binding us to host the prom at the Capitol Plaza and, and you know, not have it at the, if, if it does go that route, not have it at the school, right? Yep. Um. Jill, and then I think I'm going to move to a vote um, so we can. Continue. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I want us to have our retreat, which I'm pretty stoked yeah. about. Um, I was just going to add that, you know, I think it's important for those of us because I, I, I understand this, this feeling feels rushed, but I think it's important to remember that normally we wouldn't even be involved at this level of detail. It's, it's that the police department has specifically asked for this. I think in great response to all of the work we have been doing over the last several months and that the board has been really clear about this. And so rightly so, the, the, the MPD wants to have a formal ask so that they're not put in an awkward position and they have our consent. So I agree, it, it does, it feels rushed and quick, but I also think it's important that normally we probably wouldn't have even been involved in this level of sort of administrative decision. That's helpful, I think. Great, thank you, Jill. Um, and with that, I'll give you the first vote. Yes, sir. Do I just have to say aye now since I made the yeah. motion? Okay, aye. Thank you. Uh, Kristen? Aye. Anakit? Aye. Uh, Jerry? Aye. Um, Mia? Aye. Uh, Amanda? I have been with the caveat that I am uh, in support of bike park student feeling safe. And uh, I just want to have that in record that it's not about throwing shit at the students. I really want this. I want you to be there, but I just want to support bike park students um, and students that don't find that safety. And this is why I'm staying from this vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, Emma? Hi. Um, Andrew, um, I know you just joined and missed the discussion. We're voting on the, the uh, letter to the um, Montpelier Police Department about, uh, about prom, basically 
saying that we are okay with a plainclothes officer being there for uh, basically because the Capitol Plaza requires it um, in order to host the event. There. Okay. Um, do we? Can you give me a little summary of the discussion? Or I can just abstain to keep this moving since I wasn't here and I haven't read the letter. Okay. I'm going to abstain just because I just showed up and I haven't read the letter. Uh, no um, any other reason than that. So the motion passes with um, nine votes for, uh, four votes abstention. Wait, that math doesn't work. You get There's only nine of us. Huh? There's only you nine get, of us. You get you two votes, vote. Mia. I get two votes. Put, you get two votes. Each oh, resident counts for I two. About that. And the Thank Roxbury you. residents count for one. It was how we how we balanced the board without making it like 15,000 people. So um, yeah, so it's it's nine to four, which is quirky, I know, but um no sorry 10 to 4 10 to 4 um it passed okay uh now i think we can hand it over to to nathan okay um and thank you for being patient oh uh, absolutely i you know i love this stuff as you know <laughs> uh andrew welcome i just posted in the chat on the Zoom, a link to the Miro board that we're using. Uh, once you are rolling with that, your icon should show up on the Miro board and will be set. Um, to the rest of us, what I would like to do is for you to turn off your Zoom cameras to conserve bandwidth and move over to the Miro board. And in the bottom left menu, I think, for you will be a little video camera and click that and then we can be video visible in the Miro board and then Anna Hipko is going to share her screen. She has visibility of the Miro board um, and that's going to be the way by which the public can engage with this. Um, we will probably also want to mute ourselves in Zoom and just go with the Miro, but let's see how it goes.
I still don't have it and I don't hear anybody. <laughs> I'm playing around on this little board um, where I can move little orange things. I mean, are we just supposed to be reading the board right now? Jim. Hello, Nathan, are you there? It kind of looks like Nathan's talking, but I can't hear him. Emma, I'm in, uh, I, I'm unmuting in Zoom, so I might be echoey. Um, can you use the link in the Zoom chat to get to this Miro board, Emma? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm on the Miro board. I just don't understand how it works. And you have to like sign in. Yeah, you may need to sign in. It says you're idle. So Bill is idle. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Is that Andrew? I can, yep, I can hear you. Okay, Emma, can you hear me? And uh, and have you figured out the video chat in Miro yet? Is the video chat in Miro just pressing on the little video button?
Amanda, thank you. Anna, can you report back? Maybe I'm rushing that. I can see you. I cannot hear you right now, Anna. Anna. Okay. So looks like Anna's giving us thumbs up. I think we're good to go. Uh, Anna, just let us know if that's not working and we'll. Okay. Now you've got right, a so, reverb now. Ooh, serious reverb. How about now? Still? There's still a little echo. We go back to Zoom. That's okay with me. I think that's I probably think that's the easiest. So I'm now in Zoom unmuted, but also with video off. I see Anna sharing her screen. Uh, does everybody hear me without an echo? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so the next piece uh, is to ask you, all right, there we go. Seeing a little bit of more writing. Um, what I would like you to do, now I've got to adjust my screens is to then take a few more minutes and start sorting these value statements in ways that make sense to you. It's okay to copy one and paste and paste its copy somewhere else in case you wanted to occupy space in sort of multiple areas. And it's okay to, to talk while you're doing this unless someone wants to have sound free space to think. Nathan, can you say again, what do you mean that in, into a space that makes sense to us? Is that what these gray rectangles are? Uh, that's, yeah, that was an arbitrary structure I put there. But for example, um, kindness and empathy might be in a similar bucket or, you know, equitable and inclusive. <coughs> oh, okay, kind of group them together. Yeah, because eventually okay. what, what I would love to, what I think would be useful for you is if at the end of this exercise, we're able to aggregate these into five value statements that that describe accurately the things you all care most about in this process, in this in this work. And if we can, this this sort of sorting of concepts helps us towards that, I think. Thank you. 
So I'm appreciating, I think it's Amanda who is, who is, I made, I made four rectangles and Amanda's made a circle and is making space for that circle. Is that no, right? it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah. It was me. <laughs> nice job, Andrew. It was Andrew. It looked like we needed a new, a new spot. And it also kind of felt like things were sprouting from that area. Yep. No, I think it's great. That's, that's. One of the things I like about this tool. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call on Emma for the moment. Uh, it doesn't mean that other people have to stop working. Emma, you are working to sort of stretch the left-hand rectangle. Um, do you want to talk about what you're seeing over there? Um, well, I actually just was moving the rectangle so that it was like fitting <laughs> all of the sticky notes in it. But I think I spent more time sorting the sort of student voice, the one to the rectangle to the right. Go for it. Talk community about centered, that. collaborative, stakeholder input, um, just being inclusive of all of our stakeholders, but in particular students. And I wanted to say, I wrote that one, it's pink, responsibility for fostering world citizens, but I welcome wordsmithing. I couldn't think of the phrase, but basically, I hope that makes sense, but I'm, I, I'm trying to get at, you know, the students that leave our space, we want them to be responsible and engaged citizens. So I welcome edits to that. Yeah, I think that's a good addition. And also, and also, are we, we're our audios in Zoom now, right? Yes. And it sounds way better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, looks like the transparency, socioeconomic, fiscal responsibility rectangle is starting to have some resolution. Somebody want to speak to that? Annika, do you want to speak about that one? Sure, um, I can. I'm, I'm getting an echo from myself. Annika, you unmuted yourself in oh. Miro. Yeah. And now you muted yourself in Zoom. <laughs> All right. Do I have it now? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Finally. OK, well, thanks. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to take a crack at it. Uh, to me, in that rectangle, the fiscal responsibility jumps out the most or um, is important, um, especially the diverse, uh, economically diverse population that we have uh, in the community. Uh, but in general, um, one of the biggest things I see as a directive for board is um, the budget. And so um, long-term sustainability of the district. Um, and so keeping that in mind, uh, fiscal responsibility jumps out. Uh, transparency is a, is, a, is a big thing as well. Um, we are one of the values I feel um, we should uphold is being transparent to the community of the decisions that we make and um, you know, the, the process that we go through to arrive at those decisions. 
um, focus uh, that rings a bell too. Um, I think transparency and accountability go kind of hand in hand. Um, I think. Thank you. Nathan, to me, that box, they fall under, um, that box is almost like the discipline box, but not discipline, like as in somebody being disciplined, more like self-discipline, organizational discipline. And I feel like on fiscal responsibility, I think in today's day and age, that can be conflated a little bit with um, fiscal conservatism, but I don't necessarily view it that way. Um, I guess... I, instead of fiscal responsibility, I'm thinking of like fiscal strategy. For example, what we see, how we see the pensions having been handled at the state level, there was a lack of fiscal strategy and responsibility there. And we're seeing um, a really unfortunate situation play out right now as a result of that. And I, there's, there's also been a number of other times that I've seen in Vermont and around the country and, and world just through reading and studies and experience when a lack of fiscal planning has led to having to play catch up for many years for organizations. And that means that other priorities haven't been funded as a result of um, a lack of financial planning or financial strategy. So for example, because of our district's financial planning and strategy heading into the pandemic, we were able to have resiliency and flexibility um, and how we spent funds and we were able to buy computers for families that didn't have computers so that their kids could participate in classes and um, things of that nature. Yeah, and I wanna add to that too, that, that um, being strategic financially and planning ahead also avoids crisis spending um, and can save a lot of money. I, I wanted to add too. I raised my hand, but I realized maybe we're not doing that right now. Uh, I, I do feel strongly that the word responsible um, is important because as Jerry put in her little stick and I added, we're, we are also responsible to the voters and the taxpayers who support our school budget. So it's, it's, it's not just what we do with it, but that we have been entrusted by the public who, who voted us into these positions that we are responsible for using their money appropriately. So I, I, I get that it, it might, that phrase might come with some sort of connotation, but I definitely wanna make sure it's, it's accountable, it's responsible, and that we've been, been entrusted. So I just didn't wanna lose that, that sentiment completely about our responsibility to voters, not just the students or the families in the district, but everyone in, in both of our communities. Yeah, and I just got a point of order on, because Joel mentioned the hand raising function. Um, I cannot participate on the Miro board and see the Zoom participant hand raising function at the same time. So are people okay just kind of shouting out? Um, otherwise, I'm happy to toggle between the two screens, but um, well, Jim, I'm, I'm in the participant. To... No, go ahead. I'll try to take on the role of monitoring the uh, the Zoom. I've been I had my notes for the for facilitation over top of it, so I'll be I'll be more attentive. All right. No, I just I'm, don't I'm want waiting. people to have a hand up that's that's yeah. not being seen. Thank you. Also, I I have two computers, so I can support if needed in terms of looking at the Zoom in one computer, and I have the hand. I want to take the weight of that off of the board members, so I'll, I'll do my best at that. Okay. Um, okay, so we've, we've talked about some of these areas. Uh, somebody want to speak to the left-hand rectangle, fair, honesty, respectful, integrity, kindness, et cetera? I will start to call uh, Jerry or uh, Kristen, you want to speak to that? I see Jerry's got her hand up. Go for it. Sorry, I clicked the wrong buttons. Um, let me lower my hand first. Okay. Um, so these are kind of basics to me. Um, physical safety, fairness, honesty, courage. Um, 
integrity. I think these are things that people would assume the school board will do. It would be hard to disagree for anyone to disagree that that their um, priorities are part of our foundational values. Okay, and then speaking to the the third rectangle, resiliency, accountable, moving forward, not complacent. Um, the Libby, do you want to talk about that one? Sorry, toggling back and forth here. <laughs> um, well, the accountable might be part of fiscal responsibility as well, but um, it looks to me as if this rectangle speaks to the board's um, role in decision making for the district um, and that the board provides the structure, the vision, the goals um, that are broad and overreaching um, and it's their responsibility for the data and that kind of thing so that uh, it doesn't get off track um, with shiny objects. So that's what that's how I take that that rectangle. Um, it's speaking to the goal making and the and the visioning for the future. And then Jim, do you want to talk about the or Andrew, do you want to talk about the circle at the bottom? Andrew, you you created that, so why don't you go for it? Yeah, I just noticed that um, a bunch of equity, social justice. Um, related re, what are we calling these values the post-its sure Va values were kind of being consolidated together underneath the others and the way that i viewed like our equity policy and a lot of our discussions around equity in recent years is it's a lens that we need to apply pretty much everywhere so um for example when I, when i think about the financial and budget policies that the finance finance committee should take up at some point here in the not too distant future, we should be applying, my general thought on this is we should be applying a lens of what does this policy mean for advancing our goals related to equity. Um, when we when we look at a range of, of different issues, you know, what does that mean for the equity of our community? Are we implementing things in an equitable manner? How does this impact our, our, our community's marginalized populations? How does this, this decision impact uh, the have-nots um, and, and the haves, um, if you will, um, from a socioeconomic perspective? Um, and to me, that's something that should be kind of rooted kind of at the foundation of everything we do. Thank you. So I'm gonna, here's a point where I'm gonna point out that I named an arbitrary number of, of sort of final value statements of five. Uh, I do think it's a useful number and it's useful to sort of maintain some discipline and try to stay within that number. So we have five zones. Um, what I would like each of you to do is there are 10 of you. Um, I would like you each to spend about five or 10 minutes drafting some, you know, these are these are sort of, when we say innovative or strategic, um, that need, we need to expand on that for, for it to be a useful statement. Um, even, you know, even equitable probably needs to be expanded upon. So trying to create some sentences that capture, you know, um, we will ensure that all students have equitable access to academic resources or something like that. Um, so quietly, I would like two people each to claim a zone and just work to, to generate some statements. Um, Jerry, you wanna tell me where you wanna work?
sorry in the wrong screen um i could work on the the collaborative box great i'll work with jerry there over in the student voices collaborative box okay he has a hand up i'm not sure Thank you, Mia, where would you like to be? Oh, that didn't raise my hand for that, but I'll go to the um, the far left rectangle. Okay, who wants to join Mia there? Mia, you're on your own for a moment. Uh, Anna Kate, where would you like to work? Um, the second rectangle, the fiscal responsibility, accountability, and those kind of things. Are we working in a breakout room with another person? No, or? no you're, you, what I want you to do is literally create a sticky note and just write okay. within these areas because we can't do breakout rooms for reasons of uh, public meeting. And okay. it's okay, it's good for this work to just be visible as it goes. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe in the initial stage, try not to be distracted by what other people are writing. Uh, who wants to join Enniket? Okay, you're on your own for the moment. Uh, Amanda, where would you like to work? Uh, I get. <laughs> the circle. <laughs> <Not> there. <laughs> I would like to be in the circle. Uh, Andrew, do you want to be there or is that, uh, should I take the weight off your shoulders on that one? Sorry, my cursor is stuck between the screens and programs. Um, I'm happy to work in any of them. So if somebody else really wants to work in this area, I, I, will, I will go wherever I'm needed. I'm happy to be in any of them. Okay, so I need to hear from Jill, Emma, Kristen, and me, I see your hand up. I'm happy to do the third box. Okay, great. Mia, please speak up if you've got something to share. Uh, this is Emma, and Go I'm Emma. already assigned to the far right box, the collaborative box with Jerry. Right. Sorry. Thank you. Nathan, I was just waiting to get let people choose where they wanted to go. I to not like take us off track. Who's speaking? That was Mia. Can you hear me? So I'm just waiting. I'm leaving my hand up, waiting for folks to just choose what which box and the circle they want to be in. Okay. I'll join Jim. This is Kristen in the third box. Great. This is Jill. I'd love to be with Mia on that first one. Great. Libby, where are you going to be? Happy to go anywhere. Do you want to work with Amanda on the equitable justice rooted in diversity? Sure. Jim, I think that you are with Eniket for the moment. I thought I was in the third box. Oh, sorry, boy. I am you can put you can put me with Anakit. That's fine, Nathan. I I said I'd go with in any of the boxes wherever I was needed. So I was counting. I just wasn't figuring out that Jim and Emma were already assigned. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. Uh, let's work quietly for ten minutes and see what you guys can can uh, draft up here. So Nathan, this might be the the time to make the point that I wanted to make, which is that. The ones where I commented community initiated are the the stickies that are it are the values that came from the school safety committee, which was a, a result of a lot of community listening and stakeholder. And I I did I don't think that we, you know, just automatically adopt them necessarily, or it's only about just like, okay, that's those are our values. But I also think that there's something about not straying from those. <laughs> significantly because it would be because it would you know be, we got a lot of community input to inform those can you uh repeat the because uh, i did take note of that can you repeat the name of the committee the school safety and police relations committee 
Okay, what I'm going to do while you guys are doing some writing uh, is to change the ones that you commented on that did come from there to this blue color that I just started. Okay. And, that's and Mia, do you think it would be, would you be able to put your hands on that document really quick and link it in the chat just so that we could have that for reference? Oh, sure. The one that's just the, the list of values? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. you got that, Mia? Okay, great. I have I have a question on this activity. And are we are we writing a new sentence using these words, or are we trying to form a sentence with the sticky notes? Uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're trying to write one or two or several statements that encompass what you're seeing in these areas. Okay. This was going to be group work, but uh, that's not the way we can do this. Sorry, I got lost, guys. Oops. What am I doing? Um, so in the area that you're working, you're trying to generate one, two, three statements that describe right. the values with their, within there, within that group. Oh, we're, and we're just doing it, like Libby and I are just writing together. We're not talking to each other. You can talk to each other. You can uh, write together. You can write separately. Okay. And how do we do that on top of everybody too? Just start. Yeah, start a sticky note somewhere and go for it. Maybe, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to, oh, okay. I wanted to put a link in from the equity team's work around the definition of equity that they're, they've been working on. But I don't know, I don't know how to get rid of it. Hold on. <laughs> You can also paste it off to the side somewhere. If Wait, you'd like there's to. there's a link right there. Okay, that's easier. So I don't know if that's helpful or not. Amanda, if you're on that, where it says down towards the bottom of the first page on this draft, an equitable learning community is one where that definition right there is one that we've worked on quite a bit. It's long for a value, but Thank you. 
Nathan, I wonder if you could talk for a minute or, or not. <laughs> I'm wondering about the difference between a value and a goal. Right, so um, we, for example, we value transparency in our decision-making and um, you know, our student data, that's probably wide ranging, but that's a, um, you know, then as you're making a policy decision, you can point back to that and say, okay, I'm worried that this is gonna obscure how we make decisions about who gets um, special ed support, right? And, that, and we have a value that is about transparency. So that's, you know, that's, it ends up being a, a tool. The values are sort of a tool to keep yourselves honest or keep yourselves focused on um, on sort of how you go about the work. And so the goals are, goals might be useful to think about this as ends. Goals are, uh, or the or outcomes. But, um, so if sentences are starting with uh, like MRPS will, then that's not, that to me is sounding more like a goal. Yeah, it's just, I'm doing a lot of goals. Whereas yeah. a value would be, we believe in community-driven decision-making. Right. Exactly. So, one, uh, so are we aiming for goals or ends or values? Values right now. Goals are to the right and we'll get there. And that's okay. We can yeah. resort. The nice thing about this is we can pull things over. You know, uh, innovative, like we, we strive to be innovative in our approach to education. That's a, that's a, a value or an approach. And the outcome would be, you know, 100 percent graduation rate and blah. Got about three minutes left. Hey, hey, Jill, how are you feeling about the um, the top sentence in our purple sticky? No, I like it. Can you see them? I'm trying to communicate. It's much better. Great. Thank you for doing that. Now we have a good start. I think I'll get rid of this, the bottom half so that it's just, it's cleaner. Does that seem okay? Yep. Yep, much better. And can you see my purple sticky? I'm adding comments since I can't edit in it. Yep, I see it now. <laughs> Maybe it's our communication and our actions or something like that, I don't know. Anna, can I finished one sentence? I don't know what you think about it. It's in the upper left of our box. Yeah, I've got a few sentences which are I think more goal oriented than value, but the second box has a couple of values. Amanda, I was just trying to pull in some of those words and think about the equity statement from the committee, but feel free to um, revise and jump in on that. Thanks, Levi. I'm, I'm trying to write one too.
I'm just going to extend my timer for five more minutes. It seems like folks are doing good work, so I'm going to let it roll. Those of you who are finished writing, maybe drag your the products of this work down to the lower part of the this frame, so that we can sort of move our you know center our screens down there in in a minute. Andrew, the only thing I wanted, I was wondering um, was the uh, long-term sustainability. Um, that's whether we should include that anywhere or create another statement. Do you want to add that maybe to the- to Yeah, the that's point? what I was thinking. I, I suck at these things. <laughs> Wordsmithing is not my forte. So that's why I was gently hinting <laughs> that you can add that. Okay. I think that gets added, Anika. Yep. I like the purple and the like blue and aqua colors. Just uh just a preference. <laughs> very, very like late eighties of you, Andrew. I was born in nineteen eighty seven. What can I say? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was not born in 1987. I think I was going to prom in 1987. Was it at the uh, Plaza Hotel, Jim? Not at the Plaza <laughs> Hotel. Did you wear a red cummerbund or something else? I, I did wear a red cummerbund. I, I'm embarrassed to admit. Yeah, nothing embarrassing about that. It's, there's plenty embarrassing about that, Nathan. <laughs> That's a good, I should, uh, that's a good icebreaker. Ask everybody about their experience at prom. All right, looks like we are getting close. This uh, Andrew and Inniket, this uh, We Believe in Strategically Aligning School Resources. That's that's the, the piece that, that's one of the pieces that you generated. 
Yeah. Okay. So Andrew generated. Jim and Kristen, is one of you active on this one that says MRPS board values strategic goal driven process? That's Kristen. That would be me. That's, yeah. That's Kristen and mine are above and at least apparent to me is super small. Okay. Um, Jim, are those are the ones that you wrote in several pieces, are those intended to be one value statement per or nope. is it really they are just by brainstorm? Okay. So uh, if you will take a minute to maybe, uh, I'm just gonna try this. All right, so Jim, I've taken that first one and I've made them their own piece. Yeah. Is that right? That's fine. Um, yeah, there's, what do the other ones all go away? I just moved the, the, the omnibus one to the side. Yeah. And I'll make, I'll do this. I'm just writing and writing. Are we still? <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna pull this all together in a minute. Uh, but I, it's you guys are being productive. And uh, Livia, I made some comments in those boxes. Mia, I can't get the image of an '80s nylon swishy onesie out of my mind now that you made that comment. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad I missed it. I was writing. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to one of my classmates who went to prom in a saran wrap dress. Montpelier prom at National Life in a pink saran wrap dress. Excellent. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, I think it's time to ask you guys to pause. Yeah. Um, here and let's see. It's, you're gonna probably you're probably gonna have to crawl around a little bit to see all this because it's getting it's getting pretty big. Um, but uh, what I'd like to do is have everybody. Uh, why don't you move your cursors off to the side somewhere so that we're not trying to read through those? Um, take three minutes if you haven't already read what's been written by others. Um, please do so, and then. We're going to do just a little bit of a straw poll and see how people are feeling about how each one of these is landing.
Okay, so this is um, this is not a this is not a binding poll or a vote, but I'm going to start a poll and give you about five minutes. You each get five votes. You can single, double, triple, quadruple, quintuple vote on a single thing if you really care strongly about it. Uh, just want to see where people are ending up in liking this language and which particular sta statements are landing. Hey. Oh, ah. Go ahead. Hey, Nathan, I have a, a question. I'm having a hard time telling which one of the stickies is the sort of like final draft from each rectangle. Yeah. So I so I, I just made a bunch of stickies bigger in an attempt to answer that question. Um, so uh, that might not be it. Uh, and, uh, Emma and Jerry, the one that I'm on right here, it's a blue one. It says student-centered. We value sending all MRPS students in the work. Yada yada. Yeah. That was from the students from the safety committee, I think. Maybe yeah. not. That's why we made it blue. Okay, and, but but that's also part of your final draft, yeah, or your draft. Uh, or no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. I know what you're asking. So well, yes, well, it was one of the sticky notes that was in our section. Yep. But we highlighted it blue to indicate that it was also something that was um, uh, put forward by the School Safety Police Relations Committee. Okay, great. Uh, right, so I'm a little bit lost, Nathan, sorry, because. So what I see. In, in my work, we kind of worked individually. Yes. So yes. we didn't really get to like talk about what's final for our circle. Okay. Uh, so I see, Armando, in your circle, MRPS believes in educational equity, diversity of people, thoughts, and cultures makes us stronger together. Um, the other ones were pre-existing that, that are visible to me. Libby and Armando, are you, am, I, am I missing some? Well, I, I put all in the notes, all my comments that I have in all the things. Okay, okay good. Sorry. So... So, it's, so just, should I put them in? Yes. So that like, for example, the note that I'm reading right now, MRPS board seeks to create equitable systems that are rooted in justice centers, the needs of all students, blah, blah, blah. That, I would love to have that in a sticky. I'll just do that one because I'm looking at it. Okay. Thank you. I was sorry. I was not following how you're doing, how you were doing that. Sorry. And we're just giving a thumbs up for the ones that we want. Yeah. So give me a second to start that poll. I mean, okay. I want to make sure that this is prepared and I want to honor the work that Amanda was doing by making it more visible to you all. Um, the effect of some of this is that I'm going to sort of obscure some of the things, but I think they're captured. Oops. I'm under this one that says powered with as shared responsibility. Can you? Uh, yes, I can. I got, I, can. I got, I got, I think I got one that's going to capture. With me okay, later. thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a perfect time. I think I mentioned in my previous calls, perfect time if I am messing something up or misinterpreting something that's important to one of you or something you said definitely say whoa slow down so mia and i have have one sticky that was representative of our value bucket yep but am i seeing this correctly that some of these have like multiple stickies yep. five or six stickies okay that's okay so for example up top jim jim did some brainstorming and um put them all in, a, in some stickies that were hard to read and I broke them into three stickies each and then I made an arbitrary sort of circle over top of them to, to tie them together. Um, all right, so now I am going to launch this poll um, and you can vote on, so your votes will not 
be visible to each other, I think, during the polling. And then when we close the poll, we'll see where they go. Uh, you got five minutes. How do we vote? You see the little, uh, see the little plus signs of uh, putting that. Hold on a second. Pause. Cancel it. For later. Uh, some of Jim's stuff is falling outside of this frame. So I need to fix that. We are doing all the big ones, right? Pretty much. Right. Okay, so. Mm, oh, that's not it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get uh, Jim's pieces into a place where they can be voted on. So Emma, your purple is all of it? Or you just put it all in that one, right? That's not my section. I think purple might be Andrew. I think I remember him talking about how much he loves purple. I do love purple, but our section, it uses teal, which I also love. We're just the, the two teal ones right here. I think you might be referring to the one that Jill and I did. This right one? purple. Yep. That's, that's, we did. And I think to answer Amanda's question, yes, we put it all. Oh, in yeah. Line. Sorry. Sorry. Me and Jill. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. I have a question for you on that one, Mia. Would, would you consider that color to be mauve? I don't know. Does it change your vote? <laughs> <laughs> so I see the vote countdown is going down. I still, I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm vote, how to, how to actually literally vote. Okay, yeah, so, can we have some more time? Yeah, um, let me see if I can. Also, oh, there is another one on the on the left side that's falling off, right? Uh, I think it clicked on objects. So I also just want to clarify whether we consider that mob or not. It's getting one of my votes, so. You know. So are, are people able to vote? No. Yes. I'm not. I, I don't know what I do to vote. Yeah, Jill, if you go into the screen, the Miro screen, you should mm -hmm. see a vote now, like a black box that says Nathan Souter has started a voting. Can you see that? No. It's okay. in the upper upper right side. Thank you. Oh, it says I have one second left. Okay. That's okay. We <laughs> can, on we can... It's one minute. Oh, wait, I can only vote in one thing. You should have five votes you can use. You just click the plus signs that are appearing over comments. Over when I started my voting round, there was a little box that opened up to the left and it showed the sticky notes that I had clicked the plus signs on. And then it showed like a countdown in the top left that said you have like three more votes left, two more votes left. Is it bad if I vote in all of mine? No, it's not bad. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
Got about 10 seconds left, a little bit less. All right, can everybody see the results there? Yep. Oops, that's not what I wanted. The result, results still visible to you or no? There we go. Yes. Okay. So. I feel really is, stupid, I'm really sorry. I don't see the results. Um, try, on the bottom of your screen, next to the video camera, is there a thumbs up? Yeah. Click on that. Do you see a uh, something that says uh, values round one? Yes. Okay. okay. Now I see it. Thank you. Yep. So just to pause, this is intended as sort of a straw poll, just sort of to see where where people are falling on these statements. We're also at 3.50 p.m. Um, what I want to do is just take a breath and take a pause. Uh, so we're, you can stay looking at this and reading through this if you want, but I wanna just give you about five minutes to go get a drink, turn off your camera, and then we're gonna come right back, okay? So that is 3.55 is when we're coming back, okay? Sounds good. Thanks. Hey, Nathan, I was able to see it and then I closed it and now I can't get to it. If I click on that um, vote icon, which thumbs up. Yeah. I just see the upcoming three things, uh, but I don't see the results. So at the, on, the, on that menu on the left that, that uh, opens when you do the thumbs up, on the bottom yeah. of the menu, do you see uh, values round one completed? Nope, I just see upcoming three things. I show a values round two, but I don't yep. see rounds that's, one. That's what I see. Yeah, that's upcoming, right? Values round two is upcoming. Uh, the goals and goal right. specific and goal AES straw poll. Okay. I, um, while you guys take a quick break, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to make that visible because I can I can see the results in you. I, should. Yeah, the first time when you when you when the round the voting closed, the result thing popped up, and I was able to see everything, and then I. You know, I closed that one and now I can't get back to it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep.
All right, I see you guys still playing around on the board. Come on back with your cameras when you're ready. Hi, <laughs> Joe. Next time we'll just do this out on the lawn when it's this beautiful. Yeah. I appreciate the break though, thank you. <laughs> I apologize, I'm gonna have my camera off while I gobble down my lunch. <laughs> what are you eating, Amanda? Cereal with yogurt. <laughs> that's, that, that's what dinner would be at my house if my wife were in charge of dinner. So yeah. there's no shame. There's no shame in that. Okay, so what I did to, to make the votes visible um, is to simply tag each item that had votes with a little red tag. Do you see that? Jill, can you see it? I can see the votes on my screen so I can see the number of people. Oh, good, okay. So I'm not sure how you can see the votes, but Anika could not. Well, I can't see who they are, I don't think, but I can see the numbers. So I can see yeah. the ones that had nine and five and four. Is that what you mean? Great, okay. Yeah, I can see the red tags. Uh, I still can't see the results, but yeah, red tags, nine, Eight, seven, that's yeah, so I just I just translated the results into the red tags. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'm going to note, for example, that is everybody, is everybody back? I need to attend to that. Um, Jim, are you back? You can just thumbs up. Libby's attentive. Mia, I see you. Andrew, are you back? Emma, are you back? Emma and Andrew, your cameras are off, so I don't really know. Cherry, I see you. Kristen, you're there. Emma and Andrew, they've gone to get popcorn for all of us. It'll be home delivery. Uh, okay, let's. Sorry, keep... I'm here. I've got got the popcorn. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Now, of course, I've lost track of my notes. Give me just a second. Too many screens. Uh, okay, let's take a pause and just do a quick circle and uh, the lit I'll just read through the list. We're, we're going to start with um, Andrew, that'll give Amanda time to eat. So Andrew, Anna yep. Kate, Emma, Jerry, Jill, Jim, Kristen, Libby, Mia, and then Amanda. Uh, and the prompt is, would you describe, hold on, let me get it right. Would you describe your work on the board as working on a home or working on a garden and why? And I can remind you what order that is. Andrew, you get to start. That's a, that's a really good question. I feel like ultimately working uh, in a garden because we're, we're creating systems to help uh, other forms of life grow. Whereas I think working on a home is more I'm thinking like how do I keep the water out you know how do I pr stay protected through the winter and I think there can be other analogies that that make sense for working on a home but I think my mind first goes to to working in a garden you know how how can we set in place uh systems that support and foster growth and it's also going into the garden. I, I just went outside to check on some seedlings. It's cool to see how different seedlings grow in different ways. Um, and depending on, you know, where they are, what kind of light they're getting, um, they might grow in one direction a little more than another. Or if one's not set up for as much success, it might be growing kind of at a diagonal, like this one seedling I have out there right now. And I'm like, okay, I got to turn that, that pot to the side a little bit and give it a little more light on the other side so it can learn to stretch in those directions. So I think garden, yep. Boom, mic drop. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> Anika, you're next, hard act to follow. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so I, I wanna echo all the things that Andrew said. You know, um, the only problem is I don't garden. <laughs> um, so 
the I mean, in theory, uh, conceptually, it all makes sense. Um, what Andrew said, the analogy fits perfectly. Um, but I don't have that experience of, of going out and gardening because I don't garden, which is a really bad thing for me to say in Vermont. Um, but that is where I am. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that's where I am. On, on the house side, if I want to draw um, any parallels, um, I would want to say that, um, and that's one of the reasons why I um, kind of chose to work in the, the financial responsibility or accountability uh, uh, rectangle, is because of the, when I'm looking for projects to do it, um, or things to do, um, I, I want to work on you know, things that are long-term sustainable um, with keeping in mind my finances and budgets and making sure that, that um, I can um, provide value to uh, the, the, the project that I'm working on or the things that I'm doing would provide an increased value of the house um, as uh, at the same time kind of balancing the, uh, the, the financial aspects of it. Thank you. Emma, you're up. I just put a snack in my mouth, but <laughs> um, I like both. I mean, I love analogies, so I could go either way. And if we um, had more time, I would really dig deep. But um, I like the garden analogy um, in that I feel like um, you know, we're more like tending and watering <laughs> and trying to help grow, but it's not, this isn't a garden that we planted necessarily, but we can always plant new crops and new seeds, um, alongside the more established <laughs> growth. I'm also not a gardener, Anakit, <laughs> so I'm with you there. Um, but I like the idea of sort of like tending to a garden and um and helping it grow and and not um uh, you know the building house analogy doesn't resonate as much with me because i feel like the house is already built here at mrps um it's built but we can always improve it and as we all know living in vermont i'm sure most of you live in houses like i do that are pretty old over 100 years old our dist our district is very old there's a really strong foundation you know um so it's about sort of being caretakers and stewards of this beautiful house <laughs> and um, just trying to upkeep it as much as possible. And if additions are needed, we, um, we don't shy away from those. Uh, we don't try to stay always historically uh, perfect. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do all renovations according to um, historic design. We can, we can grow and add modern renovations. <laughs> So I, I'm with both, but I like what both Annika and Andrew said. Thank you. Jerry? Um, I want it to be a garden, but I think for me, it's a house. Um, having an 1840 farmhouse that's crooked and needs a lot of work. Um, the structures, we are, committed in a sense to certain structures. And um, I think sometimes they can feel a bit limiting, just like an old house. And, um, but that doesn't mean you can't put solar panels on the roof. And that doesn't mean you can't, um, you know, modernize it in ways that are important to modern living. So I guess I, I love, love what Andrew said, but I, I kind of feel like it's more of a house. That's how it feels to me. Thank you. Jill? Thanks. Um, I agree, Jerry. That's a good perspective, actually. You're making me rethink my, my thoughts. Um, one of my favorite phrases that I tell myself a million times a day is the only constant is change. And I think back to when our formative years and how much they still impact our lives now, you know, I'm in my forties and I still 
am feeling the impacts of my K to 12 and uh, education. So I do think it is a garden and that um, the idea is that we are fostering an experience and then handing off these amazing young people into the world. So I'm gonna go with the garden. Jim Murphy, in case there are other Jims on the call. Yeah, um, I I think it's a garden. I think Andrew articulated it quite well, but I really you know, feel that we have an educational system to, to cultivate our students and to cultivate our young um, and to give them the conditions that they all need to grow and to prosper and to thrive. Uh, and like a garden, you know, You've got your tomatoes and your peppers and your cucumbers and your carrots, um, and they all need different conditions to thrive and to grow, and they all need different levels of attention and, and different inputs. And um, you know, it's a lot like people needs, and we have to you know meet them all. Like we have, we need to meet all the needs of the plants in the garden. Um, and you know, ultimately, unlike a home, which is something that I kind of built, I think a little for me, um, and that I intend to stay in forever. Um, you know, the things I cultivate in my garden, I want to go out into the world. Um, I, I don't want my, my kids to, to live with me forever as much as I love them. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I think of that, you know, that's, that's why we have schools, that's why we have an educational system, to, to cultivate things that, that grow, that take off, that, that thrive on the conditions we give them, um, but then ultimately, uh, you know, mature and become become their own their own stewards and their their own caretakers. Kristen. <clears throat> Similarly to Emma and Jerry, I live in an old rambling crooked house. So I kind of took it through the personal filter. I kind of consider my house to like, be like a Pandora's box. <laughs> so I, I went to the, the garden analogy also, and I kind of immediately went to like the action words that I think about. I am, I am um, an avid gardener. Most people would say I have a gardening problem. Um, but I went to the action words like, um, you know, that we're, we're sowing things, we're seeding things constantly, whether it's, you know, new ideas or projects and there's like harvesting that happens you know within the system and kids are harvesting knowledge and um i thought a lot about digging in i know somebody said that in the chat but it is like you know this um this role in particular feels like a deep digging in to what uh, you know to what our schools do and what uh, what they mean and how how our communities experience them and then there's also just like the weeding out there's this like constant kind of prioritizing that has to happen and um, and, uh, you know, out with the old and in with the new and, um, you know, fertilizing, I was like budget, we fertilize things, you know, you bring the, the, uh, you know, the fertilizer in to make, um, new priorities, um, expand and grow. Um, and I thought about, you know, I approach my gardening from kind of an ecological standpoint in that, you know, a, a healthy garden is a garden that is full of uh, diversity of plants and types of flowers. And um, I think that's, just, I think this, you know, particular board that we really value a diversity of perspectives and um, can sense that, you know, we are stronger, the more, um, you know, diverse um, perspectives that we have at the table. Um, and just also feeling that, you know, Houses feel kind of their structures. It feels more difficult to to change them, but gardens kind of feel more modular and changeable. And um, there is some real opportunity in that. Thank you, Libby. I took a completely different take on this when you first asked it, Nathan. You have some good questions. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, the <laughs> excuse me. I get and agree with every single thing that people have said from a, my parent perspective, thinking about my child's district that they are in. As, but it, I'm not answering this one as a board member. I'm asking, answering this one as a superintendent of schools. And I think, uh, well, I don't think, uh, Emma one time referred to me as the mama bear of MRPS. And the thing about this that I know Jim knows as well is that I am fiercely loyal to my people. And there are three groups of people in my world, my family, my friends, and my, my place of employment, because I spend so many damn hours here. <laughs> uh, 
And, uh, and so I went straight to home because this has to be a home for me and it has to be a home for my staff and it has to be a home for my students. And so uh, I went straight to home because home is like my favorite place, right? And so I want this, this place to also be people's favorite place. And that means that it has to grow and it has to change and it has to really cultivate people. Um, but I went straight to home because that's, what, that's where um, my loyalty to this place, like my loyalty to my home is the same thing. So um, I went straight there. My garden can go to crap, but my house can't, right? That's the place that, that holds my children, my most important asset. So this is, this. I went straight to home because of my fierce loyalty to this district. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, for me, I take the approach around gar the garden. I think of it as a garden and um, in addition to the things that others have said about um, framing it that way or thinking about it that way, uh, for me, it's also that I do really enjoy gardening. I really um, get a lot of joy and happiness and pride out of what I am putting the, my efforts into. And I have moments where I find it incredibly frustrating and challenging and hard. And I have to um, make decisions in that those moments to either give up and just, you know, forget about it or, or lean in more deeply. And, um, you know, maybe that one plant isn't going to do it, but maybe it's a different one there or something like that. And so that's the only thing that I would add to as far as why it feels like um, attending to a garden to me. Thank you. Mona, you want to take us home? Oh. I'll take you everywhere. Um, so, you know, when I, when I think of gardening, I, and, and I, both thinking of home and land, you know, immediately makes me think around um, the inequities in land access for people. And so I, so thinking of right now we're in a housing crisis in Vermont. So when I think of home, that it's like what roots people where like that gives people the ability to go to a school district like ours. Um, so I, I, I was trying to like, maybe I can bring the garden inside the home, but because it's, it's like, it, you know, I really like Andrew's analogy around taking care of some of the seedlings that, you know, some might not like the sun, you know, uh, so might not be able to be on this side, but you know, we'll, we'll do much better on this side. And some might like this food and some might not like that. Um, so it, 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 and then the home makes me think of the structure, you know, I'm privileged I was able to get a house, but one of my best friends in Montpelier, we just lost her, lost her to Barry because she couldn't afford any houses here in, in, our, in, our, in our town. So when I think of house, I also think about class. I also think about privilege. And, and when I, I'm doing this work, as a board, which was the question that you posed to me, when I think of this work, I, it's rooted in that, is understanding the privilege that as a Latina married to a white man, that now I have a house, um, that I have that security that I've never had before, but that I know that many of my friends and, and people don't. And, and so like, when I think of the work, I think of the inequities in, in our system, in our house and in our land, access to land, being able to have a backyard, it's a privilege within itself. So being able to have those seedlings, um, you know, I, I li all my life I lived in little rooms in houses. So like I was never, I never had access to that until now that I am privileged to be able to unfortunately kill the little plants I planned. But, <laughs> but I, I get to see that and experience how awful I am as a partner and thankful for Isa, my daughter, who is much better at, harvesting than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Um, okay, I, kn I know I'm, I'm not giving a lot of time for us to comp contemplate each other's statements, um, but I'm just conscious of the, the time that we do have to work on this project. What I've done on the Miro board, if you turn your attention back there, is to take the statements that got voting support and move them down below. Um, 
if you click on my icon, you can find where I am on the board and it'll, there you go. So Jill is down there. So this is a, um, we, we have 11 that got any votes at all. Uh, and we have some that got a lot of uh, strong support and some that are sort of in the middle and a few that are lagging in support. Um, this is a, I want, I want you to think about uh, how this would, how adopting a limited set of these value statements would help your board work. And then as you think about, again, my arbitrary number of five value statements, if you are sorting these remaining 11 and you're, you wanna advocate for some that, are, that don't have a whole bunch of voting support, um, I want you to raise your hand within the Zoom and then um, be conscious that you're sort of, you're advocating for moving that value statement up into the top five, which would probably mean displacing something that's above it. And so just, just think about that for, you know, as you look at these and, uh, and I'll just, don't put any hands up yet, give it a couple minutes to, to look and think. So I don't want us to vote again just yet, but I um, I just did one thing, which was taking two that I think were both authored by Jim that I think expressed a similar thing. I combined them and moved one out of the way. So if if Jim accepts that sort of friendly amendment, I think we might be down to 10. Um, there may be some room for some more consolidation rather than just, you know, sort of cutting and sorting. Anybody have thoughts or suggestions about consolidating any of these? I, I think on the equity piece, I thought it was interesting that those two, I was I was torn between those two and I don't even remember which one I voted for, but I felt like they captured pretty similar values, those two that each got five. Yeah, um, education, educational equity, diversity of people and uh, create equi equitable systems rooted in justice, those two. Yeah, and I realize they're not exactly the same, but I think there's they they could be merged into one. Okay. That was my comment too. I think they're they're both getting at the same thing. Um, similar. I, I think Amanda authored those, so Amanda, I want to check with you before I combine them. I think maybe did you take the the diversity of people, thoughts of cultures that make us stronger? from the equity committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pulled that from there. I always, I always think with equity statements, and this is going against some of these statements, but um, shorter is better, shorter is stronger. And so, how, so can we say things succinctly and still get the idea across? Yeah, that's my thought too. And, and also, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the specific terms around equity are, you know, evolving. So um, I think the more we can capture concepts that aren't 
term dependent, the more durable, durable it will be. So before we get too deep into wordsmithing, um, I want to state that I don't think any one of these is ready for sort of, you know, aside from the fact that this is a public meeting, I'm not sure that any one of these is ready for the website. And so oh, I no. want to, <laughs> what I'm trying to capture is sort of the, the sort of the, the core sentiment in your hearts and are we getting close? And so with that in mind, I don't mind making the equity one kind of big right now with the understanding that it'll get refined, but I, I only want to do that with everybody's consent. I saw a thumbs up from Libby, but I can only see some of you. So you, you're going to need to speak up. Yeah, I think keep the detail just so we don't lose it. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I agree. So at this point, I'm moving forward and I'm trusting that someone will speak up if I'm doing a kind of miscarriage of your will. So what are you doing? Sorry, are, are you mixing them? Yeah, well, not okay. mixing. I'm just, just pasting the more succinct one uh, alongside the, the one that you created and trusting that uh, if we, if enough people like that general feeling that, that okay. thing and making a succinct statement can happen later. Okay, any other consolidation that would be helpful? I'm seeing two orange sticky notes towards the end, one with three votes, one with one around community engagement and being community centered. I feel like there's an opportunity to merge those. So if I just if I just paste those together for right now, can we start with that and trust that we can solve the wordsmithing later? Sounds good. Just just to be transparent, when I, that's the royal we because there's not going to be that kind of time later today. So, right. <laughs> uh, all right. So now, I think we can put this collaborative in that in that in that one too the community one this collaborative was strapped together as they call it in collaboration it's like committed to community engagement community center yeah i i see that too it's like the collaboration is the me is is kind of like the avenue of sorts yeah all right let's try that so this is this is good. I think we're getting close. What do we have here? So that's seven. I want to go back to one one comment you made, Nathan. Please. Ara you say something about if Jim if Jim's approve. Yeah. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> so this is like brings me back to like you know, collaboration and, and, and um, actively uh, uh, shared leadership, which didn't make it into this thing. But so I, was it that Jim picked the nine values that we needed to work on? Okay. No, or, the, in oh, the okay. Earlier, just in, in the last, say, 15 minutes, there were, uh, there were two things that had gotten four votes each that both came from. Oh, okay. The rectangle he was working on and he had authored those and i wanted to combine them but i felt like i wasn't the author i uh, see okay so, so the same way that when i was talking with you and libby about the equity statements i wouldn't okay. have felt comfortable combining those without you giving consent i appreciate that you see i'm projecting <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be another, I think this, um, I'm going to go with Grello because, you know, we talked about this purple one being mauve. So this is Grello here. And I think the Grello one could be merged with this top one about strategic aligning school resources in transparent ways, strategic goal driven process to propel our district forward. I think those could be merged. I'm listening for anybody to speak up. 
I, I wrote the one in Grello. Um, and I think what I was trying to capture in that was um, that particular box seemed to, um, was identifying kind of, I guess, that we value and see the need for um, clear goal setting and, and vision setting. Um, so I have to toggle back and forth. Um, so, and, and I think that it, it seemed to also convey that we want some invitation or element of accountability or that that strategy making would create opportunities for accountability, that if we have a, you know, a clear strategy that's coming out, then we can kind of come back to it to see that if we're on track with our work. So I think there's like some consistency in strategy, but I see that top one kind of having to do, especially with um, around funding and the use of financial resources. So I guess I feel like they're a little bit different in terms of intent. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me, Kristen. Okay. Um, the can I suggest? Sorry, can yeah. I suggest that this piece around the that that we believe that we're accountable to the community we serve could also be included into the community engagement piece or is that yeah um and the collaboration and all of it that i'm just being quiet because i'm reading and i'm waiting for you all to speak so Yeah, I just FYI, I've got you on the phone. I need to to um, run my daughter somewhere unexpectedly, but I will have you with me and be listening. But it should be quick. Thanks, Alanda. I think what I hear you saying is add it to that big yellow sticky, but not cut it from the Grello one, right? Yeah, yeah. I I would be I I would support that because that that's it's the accountability piece. I think that keeps us truly community centered and collaborative with the community. Can one of you just scribe that in there in a way that feels right? I can do it. I mean, we're not worth sniffing, so I just copy and paste, right? That's fine with me. <laughs> Let me find a way to make that. That one's going to be hard to read soon. Here, I can. Oh. We're just removing the tag, which makes it a little bit more legible. Okay, so here's a, we're at a little bit of a decision point in that um, this feels like it's been quite productive where it's seven of these. They're kind of big, getting them down to, to something succinct uh, will be some work. Uh, we have 40, well, we have 30 minutes left, holy cow. Um, I think it might be useful to move over to goal setting, um, but that, I don't want to make that decision, you know, this, we can either push this process forward further uh, on the values piece, or we can turn our attention to goal setting and other things. If you feel like you guys can manage some goal setting either on your own, or we get to do some other work together um, in the future, then we can stick with this. Of course, the chair is now in his in his car. So, yeah, I mean, my, you know, I think with thirty minutes, I think the goals flow from the values. So maybe let's uh, let's 
understand the values. And I think that can guide a later goals discussion. Uh, like we don't know what to base those goals off of. I, th I think the, I think the goals will flip the values. So let's let's spend time on the values and goal makes easier. I don't know if others feel differently, but that's my thought. I think it sounds like you were hit with a tranquilizer, Jim. I may have been. But we but but we I got the gist of what you said anyway. Stick yeah, with yeah. the values. Keep pushing on values. Great. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I have yes. Sorry. If we're gonna stick with the values, I have things. To <laughs> I think I think we should stick with the values as well. Does does everybody feel good about that? How does how does everybody feel on that I front? Support that. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm seeing thumbs up. I'm good with that too. Jill is about to say something. I uh, I, I do think it's helpful to have a facilitator with the goals too. Um, but I don't think I think we're we're rolling, and so we should keep going. And and I think Jim's right. We can't hop over finishing the values to get to the goals. So. Yeah, and and we might we might have some room to you know bring bring Nathan back to talk about goals, um, you know, at a, a near meeting without having to do another retreat thing. So um, we can we can put that in a parking lot. And so I've got I'm just starting a queue. I've got Amanda who's got some comments. This is a good time to just breathe from it and then sort of talk about this because it's. It's a dis sort of it's a disinflection point. Uh, if anybody else wants to pipe in or add themselves to the list, just raise your hand on Zoom, and I'll notice that. Uh, and then Amanda, please go ahead. I have to Google disinflection, but <laughs> I uh, <laughs> new word for me. Um, so in the disinflection space, <laughs> I don't think I'm using it the right way, but I'll just try. Uh, so. I think this is great. I think that one value conversation that that I don't see capture here is how we value each other, like how we interact with each other. Um, that I think is really important because of the because we are you know new to each other in in many uh, things, and so I'm not sure if that was captured here. I don't I don't kind of see it capture that in a way um and i also like wanna ask about relationship so like i i know that libby said when libby when you were talking about the home and the um and how you like you protect your staff you i i'm trying to understand the way that we see each other like our relationship together as superintendent and board and how that is kind of missing as a value in 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 the conversation like i saw that work in the in what was it mia and jill did in the purple um around like honesty and and like things but that didn't make it that right that's those are my thoughts I, that that one's in here though. Speak to that. Oh, or did I not understand what you were saying? In the in the vote, I didn't see it. So did I waste my your time by saying all these things that? Oh, I didn't see that. I did waste your time. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. But is it, I mean, but is it, is it the way that we treat each other or is it the way, because most of these are how we interact, right? Like with community, it's like what we believe we are value in these things that we're going to do, but like how we interact with each other. So can, I think it was Mia, maybe who's, who was saying that this is in there and then will you read the part where, where you see that? Well, it's, it's also entirely possible that there's more that can be put here to push it a little further, but the one that I um, think you're referring to, Amanda, is the one that's purple mauve, if you're Andrew and kind of colorblind. Um, we believe in each other. We are honest, respectful, inclusive, um, compassionate in our communication and practices so that we can learn and grow together. Just kidding, Andrew. 
I googled Mav, okay? <laughs> so how about this? Um, Armando, I just, on, on the two pink, pinkish ro rose colored ones, I tried to capture what you were saying, um, you know, how we value and respect each other and then the board and superintendent um, relationship. Uh, I can I can sort of paste some of those into that purple slash mauve uh, sticky if that feels like it would capture enough and in, in but I'm just I just want to check and anybody else too right I mean I think this is the the sort of culture of this working group which you know doesn't technically include Libby um, in its architectural structure but it, functionally includes Libby in a lot of the work that you do, or the superintendent immediately is. Andrew, I do see your hand. So if you want to speak, go for it. Yeah, I really appreciated this one from Mia and Jill. Um, and I was raising my hand before to highlight it, but then I, I saw, I heard Mia weigh in here. So um, when I, I just want to say when I read that, I did interpret this to mean how the board treats each other, but not just how the board treats each other, how, how the board and the administration treat each other, how educators and students treat each other, how students and students treat each other, how, uh, you know, custodians and students treat each other. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think this is an area that we could we could certainly dig into and expand upon uh, upon. But um, I just wanted to I just wanted to make sure we were aware that that one was there, which Mia pointed out. So I think my hand was up from that. I want to put my vote in one for that could be considered magenta. Um, and I, <laughs> but I also initially read that, uh, and I guess this is like a context question a little bit, Nathan, that, um, you know, are we writing these in terms of like really board values or are we trying to craft something that is specific like for our like district at large or are these like specific to us? Cause I think I read that one in particular, I guess I had, I hoped that that had been, um, and it resonated with me that that one was written in thinking about us as a board. So kind of echoing a little bit of what Andrew said, plus the magenta. Yes, but I really, that's a great question. Mia, I see you there. Uh, do, you want to, do you want to respond to that, Mia, or should I speak? Yeah, I'll just share my thought on it. Um, I'm not sure it's the answer to Kristen's question, but my thought on it is that as the board, I, I think it is, the, I think it's both, because I think as the board, we, lead by example within the district, you know, you know, maybe some folks don't take it all as far as we would around something like fiscal responsibility, but yeah, we would still have and hope that any staff person in the district is also, you know, behaving in a way that is, or making decisions um, that are fiscally res are, are responsible and tied to that value. But, um, but that's, that's my general thought on it is that um, as the board, we should be held to the same standards and expectations as anybody else in, in the district and um, that our values are, are the district's values. I think that's well said. I mean, I think that there, there's, a, there's a process note here, right? On the one hand, you, you as the board are responsible for the vision and arguably the values of the district, right? That's I think that's squarely in your job. I see, I see Libby nodding, not quite vigorously, but she's right there. Um, and so, you know, the, the process note is that this, aside from the safety school safety committee, which did have community input, right? This moment where where we're sort of sorting and voting and refining, there's not there's not community engagement in this moment, right? So there's there's a risk, there's a process risk from my perspective, and as you know, somebody who cares about community engagement. Um, on the other hand, uh, you are elected by the, the folks in our district to represent them. And so that is, I think this is squarely within your work. And these are not going to be etched in stone, right? These are things that can be revised. And in fact, they're not. 
They're not even finished now. Um, so I think yes to all those things, board, board and administration, students and staff. And, and I think you want, you know, in the first, in the training we did last week, there was some mention of people feeling safe uh, on the board, speaking on the board, making community, making sure that community members feel safe. And so this is the, the one that's what I'm calling purple, right? Is that anybody should be able to point to that and say, hey, this is one of our values. And that didn't, what just happened didn't feel respectful to me. Can we talk about it or something like that, right? The, the power of good value statements is that they, they, they're like, wait, why that didn't feel quite right. Oh, I can look over here and there's this tool. I'm going to use this tool and I'm going to use the tool to address what just happened. Go ahead, Amado. Thanks. Uh so yes, yes, and uh, I think there, just because we only have 15 minutes and I just wanna throw that at the process of like how we're moving some of these conversations together. Uh, other things that I've seen in value statement is like making sure that we are doing some like how to do some of these things So what happens. Yes, we believe in each other. We're honest, respectful, inclusive, and compassionate. And what happens when that is broken? You know, like what? How do we deal with it? And so, dealing with it is also, you know, a way of being like. And when that happens, we will use transformative justice tools to get us there. You know, whatever that 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 means, because I think that. Having value statements is just, just like by having them without ha without adding tools for it when things are broken, it's, you know, it, it just makes us just have statements and that's it. So I think that we do, I mean, ideally those goals will be like, we, we do, if, if we are going to say that we believe strategically and align in school resources in transparent ways, what does transparent ways mean? You know, what, what does that mean? Um, so I think that's part of our work. It's like, yeah, what does it mean to be transparent? What does it mean to be accessible to our communities? Um, what does it mean to be accountable to our, our communities? Because that's that's the meat of the of the of this work. It's like let, let's break that down. I think that's very well spoken. Amanda, if I were to the the two pink ones that I that I've put in as you were speaking earlier, would it be okay if I removed those and we stick with the purple one? Yes, thank you. Um, so we have. I'm just going to read from left to right and top to bottom strategically using resources for sustainable outcomes, uh, honest, respectful, inclusive, compassionate, equity, diversity, just, justice, uh, student-centered, authentic ways for students to share their voice and have agency, community engagement, community-centered, collaborative, uh, academic excellence that prepares for success, innovation, et cetera. And then uh, strategic goal-driven process uh, to, to propel the district vision forward, accountable to the communities we serve. I'm not seeing any more obvious uh, overlap or combining you all could choose that seven value statements would cover the, the territory. We could try to keep pushing for five, but pushing for five is gonna mean some serious loss, I think. Andrew, is that your hand up again? Yeah, 
Um, I'm just thinking about general process for this because, you know, five versus seven, I, I don't know if, if, if we were going to say, what are we focusing on this next year? I, I feel like we should choose like three main, like tangible areas that we need to focus on. These are our values. And, you know, I, I don't think that that it's a zero sum game with values. So I, I don't necessarily want to lose anything there. Um, but I'm just thinking about this in terms of process, because what Amanda said just before really resonated with me. And I feel like we're talking about our values here that then lead to, to our goals and establishing goals. And I really do feel like as a board, we need to set st strategic goals for this year. Like, what do we want to want to accomplish? Because there's no shortage of major issues that we can uh, work on. But if we try to accomplish 10 big goals this year, we probably aren't going to end up accomplishing very much compared to if we channel our energy. So I'm thinking about, you know, values to goals. But then what Amanda just said really resonated with me on, on the, the, the level of how do we get there? You know, we have our values. We have our goals that come from our values. I feel like we need to be strategic and we're going to need to focus and prioritize. But some of this in terms of like how we I think the purple one is a really good one in terms of you know how we treat each other. Um, are we honest, respectful, inclusive, and compassionate in our communication and practices? You know, what does that look like? How do we get to that place where we honor that value? And I feel like that's another really important part of this conversation um, that that we need to have and need to continue having. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that. But I also, you know, feel these values should, you know, be used to shape our goals and our goals, our priorities. And I think with I think with goals and priorities, we might want to be a little more disciplined in terms of, uh, you know, having a concise list, especially with priorities. I think just it's worth saying that with goals and priorities, a parking lot approach is much more viable, right? You can say, well. We're going to defer making real progress on that until later because these things are our main focus. I think with values, you don't want to you don't want to say, well, we'll get to we'll get to equity and inclusion later. That's not important, right? So I, that's why I just again the the sort of reducing this to five is my arbitrary number, and it it helps to get us to this point. I would recommend uh, taking these seven and you know, asking a few people to do some wordsmithing and moving it, moving it forward from there. Uh, I don't know how that would feel to you all. Kristen's got her hand up and we have 10 minutes to go. Kristen, that's not pressure. It's a lot of pressure just to find the unmute button there. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and wondering if, um, you know, the, the blue one or periwinkle, um, student-centered sticky could be either combined with the orange um, sticky, like if that's kind of like there's a student corner or a student hub, the one that mentions student excellence, or if that um, periwinkle student-centered uh, sticky could be fused with the community engagement one, because I think what we're saying is that um, students are um, really important stakeholders in this process and we really value their voice and want to incorporate it into decision-making you know, school operations, what have you, but, um, you know, if we are trying to kind of pare down, and I know five is maybe somewhat arbitrary, but it seems like that could be incorporated into either. Um, so just a potential suggestion. So either, you know, creating kind of like one, you know, one value or principle that's really student focused and it gets uh, uh, incorporated there or it goes into this community um, engagement. I'm being silent to hear other voices. Um, should I raise my hand or? Oh, go ahead, Jerry. Gotcha. Um, I do think it's a little bit different because um, we're engaging the community, but we're centering everything we do around that kind of student. So it's it's slightly different. Um, it could be combined, but. I do think it's slightly different. I also like keeping um, 
students separated from community as like the primary driving force for everything that we do here, you know? Um, so I, I, I felt like it was important to pull it out and have it be its own thing if for no other reason than to just indicate how important of a stakeholder we feel that students are. Agreed. So go ahead, Amanda, you got something or somebody else? I do, but I, I've been speaking a lot. So if other people. Yeah, let me, let me get a chance to, Anikate, I haven't heard from you in a while. And Jill, I'd like to hear from you. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I agree uh, with what everybody's saying generally. Um, I do agree that the student centric uh, conveys a different meaning, um, at least in my opinion, um, than the community engagement. Community can be engaged to have a student centric approach. Um, so, the, the two different values. Um, one point I'd like to make is, is um, we uh, yeah, I don't think we should, we should um, uh, go down in, in the values we have all talked about and discussed all these things that are important that we feel uh, are important to us as, uh, as board members and as, uh, as a district. Um, these values are gonna drive our goals and that's gonna drive our priorities. Um, of course, I agree with Jim and, and Andrew that we need to set priorities um, and we need to set a, 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 we need to come up with a set of goals that, that are um, for, for, uh, for next year that we can concentrate on. Um, so the more, uh, uh, I, I don't wanna use the wrong words, but reading through the goals and, and setting up priorities and picking the, uh, the goals that, that we uh, feel are, are important or we should concentrate on um, next year uh, would be the next step. But uh, I, I do agree that uh, we need to keep the values as, as they are. Uh, we don't need to arbitrarily go down to five values. Jill? Yeah, I, I think we have the right number just by way of what they are. Um, I definitely don't think we can mesh the student-centered and community. I do think it's very different. The students are compulsory. Um, and other than voting, the community can choose to be involved or not or reflect their values or not. Um, and we have to be proactive in reaching out to them. I, I really like these. And I think thinking ahead towards goals, I want the flavor of these values to be the lens through which we look at those goals. And I, I think we've captured it pretty well, frankly. And I just, um, I'm, I have not been looking at the screen share. Can you scroll your screen down um, off the sort of jumbled part into this part down below? There you go. Those, yep, thank you. Just for the benefit of the public. Um, okay, so next steps would be uh, the board, I, if I were, if I were on the board, I would suggest that some subset of you refine these and then come back to the board with a, a refined um, set of value statements. I'm happy to support that or I'm happy to take our first swipe at it as in my, you know, in this role and then send it back. Um, and then you guys would look at these and adopt them or affirm them. And then that would be the next step before moving forward into goals and priorities. I also want to make sure that Amanda has a chance to share what she was trying to share. And we have, and I also don't know how stringently you guys are observing the five o'clock hard stop. Um, Amanda, you're muted. Go ahead, Jim. But, and then Amanda, take your turn. I was going to talk about time. I think as close to five as possible would be good. I know that um, I think we're at a semi-decent wrapping up place. And I, I think your your next steps make a lot of sense to, um, yeah, either if you want to take a first stab and then we can, I don't know which, which maybe policy committee um, tasked with further revising from there. Um, 
and then I think we can use these graph values until they're perfect to uh, to, to start working on, on goals and priorities kind of at our next meeting, which I think we need to do, particularly new students rather than later. I, I think we can, can, I think we can start the goals and priorities process from, you know, these, these seven values before we get to working on these seven values as precise as we want it to be. Great. Amanda? I do agree we need a facilitator for that, for the, for that. Um, I, I would just say that, you know, equity has its name in all of these things that, you know, that's kind of like the frame we're talking about strategic align, aligning school resources for equitable act, outcomes. Um, and that all of the, all of it requires collaboration. So I know people are short on time, so I'm not gonna go into detail into all the like vision that I had because I think everything's connected and and there's some right now there's just like if we use the words is like the how to get there like we we believe in creating equitable systems that are rooted in justice and how we get there is ensuring that we are we have community engagement from parents and students and like the community at large right like that is just like that these are some of these our values, but are also tools to get us to this bigger picture around equity, around academic excellence, and around um, the the strategic goals. It's like that. That's how it aligns. It's not collaboration. Collaboration is the, but the rest are like the tools. How do we hear from? Thank you, Amanda. We have one minute left if anyone has anything to share. Um, I, we don't have time for a closing. Um, I, I hope I get to keep working with you on this. And I think this has been, uh, to my mind, quite productive. Thank you. And yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. I'm just, uh, um, do you want to take a, a stab at, at massaging this language? And then I think that's, that's um, a thing pass I can along to, yeah. Yep, that's fine. Jim, I think you yeah. can. Yeah, awesome. I think we do need a, a formal motion to adjourn. Yeah. Do I have one? Uh, this is Mia. I move to adjourn. I second it. And there's a quick second, Anakit. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anakit? Hi. It's five, five o'clock, so. Uh, Amanda? Yes. Uh, Jill. Hi. Jerry. Hi. Kristen. Hi. Uh, Mia. Hi. Andrew. Hi. Emma. Hi. Thanks all, and thanks especially Nathan. It was um, uh, great having you facilitate and did a wonderful job. And uh, apologies, I was somewhat distracted the last half hour, but I, I heard everything. Um, and yeah, we will, uh, I think we've got, made a lot of progress and um, have a lot to, to build on uh, with our, our next group of meetings. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I will find a way to share this so you need you know copy it all if you don't want to. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Bye. 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 See you next week.